hello everyone welcome back to our ROS2 course in this course we will cover everything about ROS2 in detail if you want to learn ROS2 with me you can subscribe my channel and also press the bell icon to get the updates of the new uploads in our previous video we have discussed how to install the ROS2 in windows and linux systems in today's video we will cover how to use the command line interface tools in ROS2 before working with ROS2, you must have to configure your environment. So in this tutorial, I will exactly show you how you can prepare your environment in order to work with ROS2. In ROS2, you can combine multiple workspaces using the shell environment. And workspace is a ROS2 term that is used for the location on your system where you are developing with ROS2. You can also run multiple workspaces concurrently using ROS2. In ROS2, you can also combine multiple workspaces that are built with different ROS distributions and you can also combine different set of packages easily. You can also install different distributions or versions of ROS2 on your same computer and you can switch in between them. This is accomplished by sourcing setup files every time you open a new shell. If you don't want to source every time for the new shell, then you have to add the source command to your shell startup script once. Without sourcing the setup files, you won't be able to access the ROS2 commands or find or use ROS2 packages. So in other words, you won't be able to use the ROS2. That is why we must have to configure our environment before using the ROS2. So how you can source the setup files? You have to use this command based on your operating system for every new shell you open in order to have access to the ROS2 commands for every shell. As I am using Windows, so I have to click here and I have to use this command. Before using this command, you must have to replace this path with the path where you have installed your ROS2 in your system. And you have to use this command in your CMD. For this, you have to press the Windows key and type here CMD. To open the CMD, click here. Now inside your CMD, you have to use this command. So type here call space. And now you have to type the path where you have installed your ROS2. My ROS2 is in C, Pixie workspace, ROS2 windows. And now the file name, which is local setup.bat. So you have to put the file name here and press enter in order to source this command prompt. Now after sourcing the command prompt, you have access now to the ROS2 commands. So to check it, you can simply type here ROS2 and press enter. As you can see that our CMD is able to recognize the ROS2 command. Next we will see if we don't source the setup files in new CMD, what will happen. So for this, again open the new CMD. And now without sourcing the setup file, if you type here ROS2 and press enter, your CMD environment will not be able to recognize the ROS2. So in this way, you will not be able to work with the ROS2. So if you source again your environment and now you will use the ROS2 commands, now your CMD session will able to recognize the ROS2. Next, if you don't want to have to source the setup files for every new shell you open in order to have access to the ROS2 commands, then you have to use this command based on your operating system. As I'm using Windows, so I have to follow this procedure. First, I have to go into the My Documents folder and I have to create a new folder with the name of Windows PowerShell. So go into your My Documents folder and create a new folder here and rename it with Windows PowerShell and press enter. Next, we have to move inside this folder and we have to create a new file with the name of Microsoft.PowerShell-Profile.PS1. PS stands for PowerShell. Now go back into your My Documents folder and now go into the folder that you have created with the Windows PowerShell. And now you have to create a new file here. So choose the text document, rename it with Microsoft.PowerShell-Profile. Now you have to change the extension from text to PS1 and press enter. Now you have to click on yes in order to rename it. Next after creating the file you have to copy this command in your file. So to copy it you have to click here. Go back into your folder. Now double click on it in order to open it in the editor. Next you have to paste the command here. Again, you have to replace this path with the path where your ROS2 is installed. So my ROS2 is in C, Pixie workspace, ROS2, Windows. That's it. Now you have to save your file and close it. Next, if I will open my new CMD, 
now if i will type ros2 here without sourcing the environment it will generate the same error ros2 is not recognized because this command only works with the powershell now for example if i will press the windows key and i will type here powershell and i will open my powershell now if i use the ros2 command here in my powershell so you can see that it is able to recognize the ros2 commands so in this way you don't have to source the set of files for each shell you open and next if powershell will ask for your permission in order to run this script for every new shell you open then to avoid this issue you have to use this command so again copy this command from here now go into your powershell and paste this command here and don't forget to replace the path here with your path where you have installed your ROS2. So again, my ROS2 is in Pixie Workspace, ROS2 Windows, and your file name local setup.ps1 and press enter. And next, every time you source the setup files in your CMD, it will set some environment variables that are necessary for operating ROS2. So if you ever find problems in finding the ROS2 commands or using your ROS2 packages, then you have to make sure that your environment is properly set up. In order to check your environment, you have to use this command based on your operating system. For Windows, you have to copy this command by clicking here. Now, go into your CMD shell where you have source your environment and next you have to use this command and press enter as i have already sourced my environment so you can see this type of output ros distro we are using is the kilted kaiju and the ros python version we are using is 3 and we are using the ros 2 so that's why the ros version is 2 here so if you don't see these variables in your command prompt or shell, it means that your environment is not set up properly or you have problems with the installation of the ROS2. And next in ROS2, there is a special variable called ROS domain ID and you can assign a unique integer value to this variable. It works like you are assigning a group number to a set of nodes. For example, we have four nodes in our workspace. And we want to make two groups, group 1 and group 2. In each group, you can place one or more nodes. And the nodes of group A are not able to communicate with the nodes of group 2. But the nodes can communicate with each other within the same group. To better understand it, let's try one example. And to demonstrate it, we need two command prompts. And you must always have to source your command prompts before using the ROS2. So I have already done it. Next, also you must have to set this variable in each of your session or command prompts. If you don't set the value for this variable by default, it will get the value 0 and in each session it will set the value 0. So it means every session you open, all the nodes are belong to the same group number 0. For example, if I will run one of my node in this command prompt, which is the listener node. So it will listen the message whenever I will publish this message by using the talker node. So it will send the message from here and now it is receiving the message here because both have the same group number. So the nodes which have the same group number, they can communicate with each other. Next, for example, if I will set my ROS domain variable with value one, and in this session, I will set again the value for ROS domain ID variable is 1. Now, if I will run my node again, the listener node and the talker node, they will communicate with each other because both belongs with the same group. And next, for example, if I will change my ID for this session from 1 to 2, now whatever node I will run in this session, it will belong to the group number 2. And in this session, we will keep the same domain ID number 1. It means whatever node we run in this session, the value 1, it will assign to the group 1. So again, if I will run my talker node again, and here, if I will run my listener node here, you can see that they are not able to communicate with each other. So in this way, you can assign the group numbers to the set of nodes in your sessions. Next, if you don't want to assign different group numbers to your nodes and you want to keep the same number for all the nodes in each session, then you have to use this command. Instead of set, you have to use this setx command. It will set this variable for all of the sessions and the nodes. 
and next in ROS2 there is another important variable called ROS automatic discovery range this variable allows you to limit the discovery range of the ROS2 by default it has the value of local host or subnet it means all the nodes that are running on the same machine can communicate with each other this variable is helpful in certain conditions such as classroom where you have multiple robots which are publishing to the same topic which may lead to strange behaviors now we will see See in detail how we can limit the discovery of the ROS2. So here you can see that by default ROS2 has the value of subnet. It means all the nodes on the same machine can communicate with each other. So how you can able to control the discovery range of the ROS2 for this you have to configure these two parameters. The first one is ROS automatic discovery range and the second one is ROS static peers. And you can assign any one of these values to this variable ROS automatic discovery range. If you assign subnet value to this variable so it will discover all the nodes that are reachable via multicast. If you assign a value called localhost that it means all the nodes that are running on the same machine will be able to communicate with each other. If you set this variable off it means that no node will be able to communicate with each other even they are running on the same machine. If you set this variable to systems default it will revert back to the default settings. And the second variable raw static peers. Here you can give the list of the IP addresses in which you want to enable the communication. For example if you have two machines and both machines have different IP addresses and you want to communicate in between these two machines then you have to assign the IP addresses of these machines to this variable and you have to separate the IP addresses by placing semicolon in between them. And next to better understand it we have to look in this table. In this table we have two nodes A and B that are running in the same machine and where we have the values for these two variables. For example these are the settings for the node A. These are the values for the variable called raw static peers and these are the values for the variable called the automatic discovery range. And similarly for the node B we have the values for these two variables here. These values for the static peers and these are the values for the automatic discovery range. Now you know that if we set any of the node discovery range variable to off so they will not be able to see or will be able to communicate with other nodes. For example if we set node A discovery range to off so it will not be able to communicate with the node B. Similarly if node A is off but node B is running in the local host still node A is not be able to communicate with the node B. So if node A is off so it will not be able to communicate with the node B in all of these other settings. Similarly for the node B, if we set the node B off but we change the settings for the node A, still node B will not be able to communicate with the node A. What if we set the local host to the automatic discovery range? Then node A and node B are running in the same machine so they both have the same local host so they are able to communicate with each other. Similarly if you set it to subnet they are able to communicate with each other. Similarly with the static peer. Because they are running on the same machine so both have the same IP address so it means they are able to discover each other and they are able to communicate with each other. For node A and B if they are running in the same machine it's pretty simple. They are not only be able to communicate if the ROS discovery range is off but for all the other values they are able to communicate with each other. But it is useful in the case where node A and node B are running in the different machines. Here for example in the off case it's the same. They are not able to communicate with each other. For example if node A is off it is not able to communicate with node B in all of these settings. Similarly here for node B. But the things are changed here. For example if node A is running in the local host in his machine and node B is running in another machine within its local host so they are still not able to communicate with each other. And for example if node A is running on the local host but node B is running on the subnet still they are not be able to see each other because node A is only be able to discover the nodes that are running within the same machine. And 
Similarly here, if we assign the IP address to this variable static peer, then even if the node A is running in the local host, so it will be able to discover the node B that is running in the local host because we have given the IP address of the other machine to this node. So it knows where he has to find the node B. Similarly, if the node is running in the local host and if node B is running in the subnet, then still it will be able to find. And now if node A is running with the peer settings, but node B is running in the local host, so it will be able to find it each other similarly for the subnet. So it will be able to find in both of these cases and similarly here. So next, this is how you can set these two variables. So if you are running the ROS2 in Windows environment, then you have to click here and you have to copy these commands in order to set these variables. Here you are setting the ROS automatic discovery range and you can assign the value here, localhost, subnet or off or system default. Here you can set the value for the variable called the dot static peers. Here you can assign the IP addresses for each cell you open. And if you want to make this permanent between all the shell sessions, then you have to use this commands. And instead of set, you have to use this set X. Then these variables are set for all the sessions. This is it for today. In the next tutorial, we will see how we can use turtle sim ROS2 and RQT. These are the visualizations that will help us to simulate and to better understand what's happening in our ROS2 projects. So see you next time. Bye bye.